Greetings, everyone, and welcome tonight. Thank you so much for being here at our Kelly Uphill TV. And we're discussing topics that are relevant to our Kelly. And uh, we have a lot of information to share with you tonight. So we'll get right into it. How's Kelly Nation doing? Could you throw a hello in the chat? Hello, hello, hello. Hello. We're going to talk about some appeal information. Um, we just have a brief thing to discuss tonight um, on the appeal, but it's a good movement forward. Many of you probably have heard that uh, Jennifer Bonjean on the 9th, she had um, submitted an appeal for Chicago, and we're going to discuss that. It's just a real small sentence stating that this is what's going on. So how are we, Kelly Nation? Tonight we're going to also talk about how we got to know our Kelly. You know, many of us, he just showed up, right? He just showed up. But there is a method to the madness and how he showed up to us for America to even know and our Kelly to even know that he would eventually, you know, have to be serving time and other things like that. So we're going to get into that tonight and we're going to have a little video. Well, the video is of a gentleman who is saying how, you know, he met R. Kelly through the process and how R. Kelly has shared with him um, information about the Illuminati when he was younger. So we're going to I, I do feel that this should be part of the historical process of our Kelly Appeal TV because it has to do with Robert Sylvester Kelly, and it also has to do with um, what people are saying about him, especially now that, you know, everything is over, primarily, okay? So, greetings, Kelly Nation. Josephine in the house, how are you? Linda, Kenneth, how's everybody doing tonight? Everybody good? You know, I've just been doing a little bit of research every now and now and again on, you know, what's out there in mainstream media. And I'm seeing there's a lot of people that are being exposed. You have a great deal of people being exposed. Now you have, um, and I'm just bringing Jaguar right up because of the connection with Legina, which was a connection to Robert, supposedly. And uh, so there's a lot of conspiracy that, you know, things are tearing itself apart in, in the, the media, in mainstream media. So... If you have heard anything about it, you already know what I'm talking about. If not, you know, you might want to, you know, I, I think a lot of that has to do with entertaining society while other things are taking place. Because now Robert Sylvester Kelly, all the distraction is over with him. He's already gotten his sentencing. He knows what the worst case scenario was and is. He's appealing. That's going to take a little more time, but they still need to share things with us so we can be distracted. Pay attention to what's going on to with the Dow Jones right now. You know, you have big industry banking in, institutions closing down. And that is powerful because that's where our money is, you know. Uh, since the pandemic, there's been a lot of things going on with the money system. So pay attention to the link with that as well. All right. Glad Kelly Nation is doing great. Um, we're just, you know, 
just talking, sharing some feelings about tonight's topic. Why do you think we met R. Kelly? Outside of the industry and him being so um, talented, why do you think we met R. Kelly? Hey, Cindy. Yes. He is being blessed. He's being watched over and all will be well. All will be well. Why do you think we met R. Kelly? How did he make it into the eye of America? That's what I need to ask Kelly Nation tonight. And while we're waiting, because we were talking about the exposure and the soul ties within the industry. Um, I'm gonna quickly share this with you. This is the motion that was filed on the 9th. And it's the to the appellate courts. The Honorable Harry D. Lennon Weber. So um, basically, Bon Jean is not happy with the sentencing. Um, and the conviction in the Chicago trial. So she is going to appeal that. And it's saying Robert Sylvester Kelly appeals to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit from the District Court's final judgment entered in this action March 7th, 2023. And so she filed her motion in enough time to make sure that they received it. So now she's going to go into the process of getting ready to prepare for uh, New York um, opening brief. And she's already um, entered this action on the 7th. She's asked for an extension, so April the 7th marks the process beginning with his appeal in opening argument or opening court. Timothy, the world will know my name. Yes, he did. Wasn't that one of his very first songs? How did he know that the world was going to know his name? It's amazing. Coming from the streets, knowing the talent that he held, and he held great talent. Okay, we get that. But how did he know that the world was going to know his name? You know, think about that. So tonight... I'm going to talk about the soul ties. Does anyone know about relationships and how relationships can create a toxic environment for someone and that person stays so committed to that relationship no matter how abusive that relationship is? So that is the definition of the soul tie in which I'm going to speak about the industry relating to Robert Sylvester Kelly, R. Kelly, okay? Um, it's like the sacrificial process. And that sacrifice is, in order for me to be this, and it goes on in Ivy League colleges, it goes on in uh, competitions, it goes on in the NFL, it goes on in the NBA, it goes on in the Olympics, you have people swearing to an oath to do this, that, and whatever with a with the sidebar that is a sacrifice. Remember when Robert was going through the the trials, and everybody was saying, "Why is prosecution doing this? How could they sidebar him here? How could they?" How could they do this? 
How was the court system allowing this stuff to go on in his case? He wasn't able to say anything. They muted him. They would not allow certain testimony um, expert witnesses to come into the case. That would not normally happen in anybody else's case, right? So the soul tie that came with the industry to make R. Kelly who he was, was signed a long time ago. It was signed in blood. I believe that, and I'm going to share with you and give you some factual basis of what I'm speaking here tonight. And please jump in the chat and share what your thoughts are as well before we get to the main topic of tonight. And I am going to be using someone else's interview because um, R. Kelly Appeal TV doesn't really do like exclusive interviews and anything like that on the show. So what I take, I review and I learn and I see and I do my research afterwards, okay? So back to the matter at hand. So you have an individual who has sacrificed and this is what he was saying over and over again. 30 years of my career, that was a pivotal point. And if you think about it, Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, all the ones who have moved on and they didn't want to let go of their career. But when that time came, just like Jaguar Wright, she's in a mental hospital. They got her so pumped up on drugs because she was exposing the, the media. She was exposing the music industry. You cannot be part of the game and expect to get out of it without losing something, without some sacrifice, okay? Now, I don't know whether, you know, it was known that they were sacrificing whatever they were sacrificing. I don't know that. But when I share with you what we're going to talk about tonight, and I definitely want some input I want some valuable content coming out of this chat tonight because this is severe. So, Kells knew that the world was going to know his name because he was blessed with a special and unique gift very few artists have. When you know, you know. And Linda, exactly. That sounds profound. That sounds absolutely to the mindset of an individual who has the talent. And of course to us, the ones that are looking in the hourglass on the outside looking in, okay? Not the individuals in the secret society, okay? They're not more or less as naive to what we're not privy to. And I'm going to share that with you tonight. So, yes, that sounds great. He had a lot of talent. He had a lot of unique activity. But he also had something, a dark cloud over his head. How did he get the dark cloud then? If his uniqueness and his, and his ability to have a premonition so profound that everybody in the world was going to know his name, but then they also knew of the cases as well. Yeah, I get it. He's human. He's a man. He's prone to error. He makes mistakes. I so get that. But these people know when these people are set up in our society to be fans or for us to be fans and supporters to them, they already know what's going to go down. Mm -hmm. Him not having his father was a very strong component to what I am speaking about tonight as well. Because not one time did anyone in the entire world 
stand up and say, this is my child. And I always had a question about that. This man is so gifted and talented. His father better had been able to sing, but I digress. So I'll come back, back to the matter at hand. Could the father have been sacrificed for R. Kelly to be who he became? We're going to share some information about that tonight. Um, I always had that. Where is his father? Because I lost my father at a young age, but I at least knew what happened. He never got to know who his father was. Now, what I'm about to share with you tonight, we're going to get right into it. They're going to talk about the supporters of R. Kelly. They're going to disrespect us. They're going to challenge us in many ways. But we, on the other hand, are going to look at the scenario and the interview, and we're going to break things down. We're going to speak in between the motions. I want you to pay attention to this video because I asked myself the question, and this is a new trending video. How did it just come out a few days ago? How is it that this wasn't already anticipated during the process of surviving R. Kelly? Okay? And that's what we're going to talk about in this clip here. So, does anyone have any questions before we get started? Because, um, yeah, we're going to talk about the industry. How did we get to know R. Kelly from the very beginning? So please hit the like button so you will, so we can keep this video as alive as we possibly can. I am not taking anyone's content and making it my own. I'm actually in opposition to a lot of the things that is said on this video. However, there are some things specific to the industry that I want to share with Kelly Nation. So what he had to sacrifice in order to be known by us is what was making him so emotional on the Gail King interview. We're going to look beyond the sentencing into what ifs within the world of R. These views are going to be ex extreme for Kelly Nation. It's going to be very different. However, it would not be a factual channel without the information being shared about how R. Kelly became the king of R&B in such a way, in such a way. So here we go. I'm going to start it and then I'm going to look um, then I'm going to stop and get you guys' viewpoints about it. Um, there is a program, if you will. Um, it's on YouTube, and it's about exposing the industry. So I ran across this video. It was submitted to me in an email, and they suggested to me that I look into it. Uh, for the sake of our Kelly Appeal TV. Let me see here. <clears throat> Let me pull this up. Mm, let me delete that. Okay. So this exposure is supposed to come from someone in the industry that met R. Kelly at a very, very young age and talked about. Now, when you look at the video, I want you to pay attention to the way that this gentleman decides to look down at his script, showing us something, okay? Showing us something very, very important because these people come on and they make up these, uh, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and then the next thing you know, they're like, making all this stuff up, I believe, as they go, as they go. So let's take a look at this, and then we're going to, um, I'm going to share with you where this video is at online, where you can go and look at the full video. All right. 
Some of you have probably already seen this, but we're going to take a review of it tonight. Let me go over here. All right, here we go. Oh, that's really odd, brother. They can see and hear us on Facebook just fine, though. Well, hmm. No, well, no, no strikes. Okay, then it's just they don't like us. <laughs> yeah, there ain't no strikes or nothing there. This uh, is proof, Corey, that they don't like us. Oh, we're live now. Oh, uh, it's on now? Mm hmm. All right. There we go. Uh, it's just a little, just a little small hiccup. It'll be all right. We ain't gonna sweat the technique. We're gonna get it moving and make this thing work, right? So, uh, like I said, MAGA had a, um, I'm, I'm gonna let you tell it. So, MAGA, what, what, um, let, let's go back to this, um, uh, uh, R. Kelly deal. Mm hmm. You, when you first met him and how you met him, how did you okay. meet him and, and, and where and all that? Give us, j just take it, take it that far and then we go from there. All right. Well, I went out to Chicago to visit a relative of mine's and we went out there just, you know, just to have fun, you know, spend some time with the family. And we went to this thing out there uh, called The Takes. I went over to Waukegan to watch uh, Michael Jordan's sons play basketball. They were at the time, like, kind of like the teenage ages, uh, getting, going into college a little bit, probably, I think. But um, they, were, they were good. You know, Little League, uh, went out to Waukegan, came back, spent a little time with my um, family. And I, I was, at the time, I was around um, Star Trek with Pharrell and them. So I had, like, a different type of persona. I was a skateboard, BMX biker type dude. And um, I ran into a photographer and a female friend of mine that was asking me if I wanted to meet R. Kelly. And this was, like, 2008 when he just finished the allegations, I believe, with uh, Sparkle's niece. If I'm not mistaken, and I was like, um, yeah, I, I don't. I, at the age, I didn't see it, so I was like, I don't believe what's on TV. I'm just like everybody, like, man, they're just trying to set the man up. So I go, um, I get to the studio, you know, and when I walk in the studio, it's just, it's like he has an entourage full of people. It felt like a, a presence of power. Like that's the first time in a long time I've seen somebody with a structure that just, you know, the hat, the shades, the the no words and. You know, we had to sit down and, and wait. So once he was done, I guess he had a session with an a, a R&B female. At the time, I didn't know who she was. We waited until she got out. We walked in, and he was like, you know, this guy, this little guy, he's good, man. He makes a little different type of music. At the time, I kind of made, like, the NERD, Pharrellish type Neptune records. And I was like, man, you know, um, can I play a couple of records for you? So I played a couple of records for him, and he was like, He's kind of bobbing his head to it, like, oh, this kind of puts me in the mood of Pharrell a little bit, man. You kind of remind me like a little kind of skateboard P. So I'm like, yeah, man, this is, this is what I'm trying to pursue as a youngster. I mean, I skateboard, I do this, this is the image I want. So he sits back in the chair and he asks for everybody to leave. He says, I want to have a personal talk with him, you know, to see exactly how serious he is. Now I'm going to pause there because he's 14 years old at this meeting with R. Kelly. He just said that it was, you know, around the time of, you know, Sparkle and the, the niece and all of that. But he somehow makes it to, at the age of 14, he makes it to R. Kelly's studio. Do you find that strange, Kelly Nation? I find that very strange. Because now he's coming on talking about this so many decades later. Um, and he he left the he left the scenario unscathed. Nothing happened to him at all. Do you find that odd, Kelly Nation? That's something I want you to consider. I would like you to put that in the chat if you do. Yes, thank you. Because I found that extremely odd. How he's going to go at the age of 14 to a studio without any type of guardian, you know, doing what he does as he flows. Now pay attention to this story he's about to tell now and watch his 
you know, cause I looked at this video and watched his character, um, without any sound to it. And I seen a lot of things, um, that would show that a lot of this was just scripted, but let's see if you catch it as well. Here we go. He's like, what do you, what do, what do you know about the industry? And I'm like, I mean, just making music. <laughs> you know, all I know is uh, uh, making music in the studio and doing what I love to do. You know, and he was like, well, you're, you're, you seem like you, you don't, you really don't know the industry. And I was like, well, I make music, sir. You know, at the, all due respect, all I know is the music. He was like, do you, have you ever heard of the Illuminati before? And I was like, no, sir. I, I heard of Illuminati Col from, from Tupac, right. but I never heard yeah. of <laughs> you know what I mean? But I never heard of you know what I mean? So I tell him, I'm like, no, I don't, I don't know anything about that, sir. And he's like, man, you, um, you sure you want to be in this industry? And I'm like, yes, this is what I love to do. I love to make music. I love so, to make so music. He, so he flat out called it the Illuminati. Yeah, like, flat out called it just straight yeah. Illuminati. Like, straightforward. Like, and it was so weird because, like I told you, his studio was so, you could feel like the energy of, power but it was dark it was real real dark in the studio like you know what i'm saying okay now when he's talking about power how can you look at a room and see power at the age of 14 how, I, I know i've never been anywhere maybe at a big you know uh building and i said whoa this is big it's illustrious it's beautiful Maybe that, but that's as far as I'm going, right? But maybe he's coming from a place where he was in the industry and he was used to seeing power. Maybe that's it. Now, the chat is saying, this is the guy that says he's Jermaine Jackson's son. He was on Big VY Opinion. Okay, I did see that. And I also saw that he was a manipulator as well. He speaks on behalf of things that benefit him. Um, to me, no one ever shows receipts. Like Legina Gold just says, I'm Aaliyah and R. Kelly's daughter, have no background to prove or show any of her defense. I think he is also another situation like that. Chad also says, yes, there is something amazing about him coming to the studio by himself at the age of 14, showing R. Kelly his music. Why didn't he get his father, Jermaine? Why didn't he get his uncle, Michael, to send a demo over and say, check this out. If you see that, you know, you can do something with his music, how about you holler at me, you know? Um... So basically, he's saying something happened to him or something like that. No, absolutely not. He is not saying anything of that nature. What he is saying is that the Illuminati was very profoundly present in everybody's life, including R. Kelly's. That's what he's saying. Um, out of all this time, he wants to come now. That's weird. That's what I was thinking too, Tim. I'm like, are you seriously going to say that um, all this stuff happened and you weren't a part of the docu-series, but yet you were right up there front and center with R. Kelly? Come on. Hey, Daddy Lolo, how you doing? Um, so let's finish this. Like, almost like he did. I remember I was watching um, Surviving R. Kelly. And they were saying, like, some of the girls were saying, like, in the studio where he has, like, the, the bedroom in the back studio area is the truth he did. Like, and I was thinking the same thing. Like, why does he have a bed <laughs> inside of the, um, in the studio? Like, I'm well, that's a really stupid question. And I say stupid because when people are doing interviews, what they need to do is make sure that they're scripting um, and not just free freestyling or free flowing. Okay, because what he's just saying is this. It's like me. If I have a studio and I'm recording something all day, all night, and that's what I'm doing. I'm popping out hits left and right, right and left, up and down for decades. 
Why wouldn't I have a bed maybe where someone's in there, you know, uh, producing uh, loops or uh, loops for uh, a verse or something? I can lay down and take a nap. Just something. You know what I mean? He's. He, it's not like R was a robot. R did not stand for robotic behavior. You know what I'm saying? He was a human being. He was a human man. So that's probably why he had a bed. And of course, maybe he did want to romantically interconnect with uh, some of the women after he was making his music to his music. Didn't Levert say he wanted to make love to his song? Didn't he say he wanted to get married off of his song? What was so wrong with that? But I digress. Let's stay focused and keep it moving. Chad is saying, I don't understand how you can say a room has power. Yes, Timothy at the age of 14 too. This is why I say R. Kelly's life was already set up from the very beginning. And I believe that his father was the sacrifice to get him where he became, even all the way down to what we're fighting in appeal right now. Hey, Diane. It's not a crime. No, Daddy Low. It's about why are these people sitting here trying to uh, add this thing up like it was some type of Perry Mason mystery film? And this is why we see what happened in trial and why everything was sidebar because this was part of the sacrifice. Now, let's keep listening. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, wait, hold on. Before, before we continue, I know we did we did get distracted with the um, show not working or anything. Yes. Yeah. I think I did forget for you to, uh, I did forget to introduce you. This is, um, hey, go, go ahead and introduce yourself, man. Tell me a little bit about you. Um, make, it, make it real I'm Andre Ben, formerly known as Maggie Jackson. Uh, just a, a wonderful uh, um, musician that just, you know, I put my all into my music, man, and just trying to do, trying to stay out here and do the right thing and, and grow as a person. I've been through a lot of things, testimonies, you've probably heard about me before, but it's a fresh start for my brothers, Marlon and Corey, I'm just happy to be here today. Cool. All right, now, st- go, now let's start where you left off at. You was, you was in the studio, because she said you didn't introduce him. She wanted to beat me up, I didn't want to. I didn't <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, yeah, so he got into it and he was like, man, it, it comes with a lot of, you know, responsibilities of being a musician and everything is not good. He said, I see, you know, I see the influence in you and I think you can go far. Then he asked me, what is the three doors? And I'm like, man, I'm like three doors. Did you see him drop his head down? Did you see him drop his head all the way down? I'm going to take it back. And then I want you to pay attention to the three doors that he discussed. He's going to look at this paper. Now, if you are 14 years old, this would be the most scariest thing of your life that you will always remember. But watch what he does. Let me go back here. I hope I can only go back a couple seconds. Okay. Let me see. You know, responsibilities of being a musician and everything is not good. He said, I see... You know, I see the influence in you, and I think you can go far. Then he asked me, what is the three doors? And I'm like, man, I'm Look like, at that. three doors? Like, oh, you got to remember, I'm 14 years old. So he was like, what are he you thinking about, about them doors? Slander, homosexuality. Look at him. Mean? Look. And basically, the sacrifice. You know what I mean? As far as when it comes to sacrificial, like, what do you know about that? Now, those three major topics would be one of the most, uh, 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 they would be the most harsh thing that you could really remember as a 14 year old. That would scare the living crap out of you. Just like the bed probably would scare the living crap out of you at 14 years old. Um, Hey Jason, I doubt seriously that Kells would be discussing that type of conversation with a 14 year old. 
It's only a crime only when it comes to Robert. Nobody else. That's so wrong. Go after everyone, just not Robert. Oh, well, they're going to have something for us, Diane, in a little bit. We're going to be creepy crawlies because we feel that way. But we got something to share with this um, uh, response to this video. But let's keep listening. And, and for me, obviously, like, I don't know anything about that. Like, the three that's doors. I can't really answer. And I'm like, you know, I have to say, could you let me know what that's about? And he's like, you know, at the, at the end of the day, when you're in this industry, you're going to be, certain people are going to propose certain things to you. And you have to make a choice in life that if you want to be a celebrity or go through downfalls. And I was like, you know, man, um, I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't know anything about, again, I don't know nothing about the Illuminati. So it was very, it was very intense to me because it felt like a pressure to me. Like it was, I feel like I was being pressured as a person, as a child, because I didn't understand anything that he was telling me. And then when he broke it down, when he went through the doors, I was like, so I asked him, I said, so what do you mean by sacrificing? It was like, when you sacrifice something, he asked me, when you sacrifice something, what does it mean? I was like, it means you give up something. And he was like, exactly. And he was like, are you, are you a straight person? You know, like, are you, are you, what, what is your, your choice of, do you like women or you like men? I said, I love women. You know? You don't like women, you love them. <laughs> like 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 or love love like yeah like like love love you know and then he was like um with the uh slander people go through then he said you see you see what happened to me on tv how they tried to lie to me and say that i touched uh these little girls and tapes and i was like i heard about it but i don't really know too much about the situation so then he started playing his music he put i'm not gonna lie he played me some records that he did for michael one of them was um uh, he played the, the past record. You are not. Um, you are not alone. You know what I mean. He played. You are not alone, and he said that that song was a bot for a girl named Lizette Martinez. That's what he told me. You know, at the time, I guess I don't know if they were dating or they were together. And I was like, that's a beautiful song, man. Like that's one of my, you know, my favorite songs. He was like, yeah, and I was like, man, you know, um, is any possible way that I can? record with you like is any is any way i can record with you as a kid or get any in insight of you know just bringing myself to a bigger level because remember i told you at the time i was going to virginia working with star trek with pharrell the neptunes uh malice put your t the clips and everybody else and he was like well listen before we even do any type of work i want to let you know how i run things he said when you become an artist and you want to be an eli artist you have to have your own planet. I said, your own planet? <laughs> what do you mean your own planet? He said, you have to set the norms. And I said, set the norms? Meaning basically everybody abides by your own rules. Meaning that even if anybody goes left or right, it won't matter because you already established your own work, whether it's politicians, anybody at the time of, in your circle, you have to set your own norms. And digesting that now, I can see that Robert had a controlling problem. He was very controlling. So now you have a 14-year-old kid. He's telling all of these uh, underlying secret society rules to that obviously he should know, especially if Michael Jackson is his uncle, okay? Um, so he's saying all of this stuff, and it's so weird to me because I don't see R. Kelly having the uh, dyslexia problem or the problem that he had with the reading and all that to be willing to express this to this young man. I just don't see it. And then did you see how he, believe me, you, that's just like being scared into almost being touched by someone. If you're going to talk about the Illuminati and to put someone into a position of power that this young man was talking about, he all, and then after all of it, he wants to do what? 
let me let you hear some of my music. So was he selling himself? Was he pimping himself at that particular moment? Kelly Nation. How is he going to tell him that song was made for Lizette when Rob doesn't even know Lizette? I don't know. See what I'm saying? It just don't make sense when you try to force a lie into a script, especially if you have not done your research and your work. You know, timelines mean everything. I don't see Kells having this conversation with a 14-year-old. Me either. Neither do I. But let's keep listening because it gets deeper. It gets way deeper. Because to tell somebody that at the age of 14 that you to control your own norms and, you know, no matter how you control society and every, you put your own rules around you, that no matter what, they have to follow those type of rules. Now, here's what I will say. The Illuminati may do that. The Illuminati is possible to tell these young kids, hey, you want to get up out the hood? You want to start making millions of dollars? You want to be hot on the radio? You want to hear yourself on the radio? You want to be on the widescreen? You got to let go of everything that you once knew. All of your morals, all of your values. You got to let go of your family. Sometimes you might have to sacrifice a family member in order to be who you want to become. And I think that what they were doing, the, see, this is the aftermath of what the, the story of the docuseries really set up about Robert R. Kelly. And they're trying to come in after the math, after the hurricane, and they're trying to clean it up and make sense of the hurricane. But the hurricane was obviously already set in stone and etched in blood from the very beginning. But I don't think Robert may have known it, but they're trying to make him look as though he already knew about Illuminati. And that's the that's the conversational piece that we're having here with this video. Um, okay, let's keep going. And that was a very, for me, that made me very uncomfortable as a person because I'm a child, like I'm looking at him like, I don't, first of all, this is, this. First of all, if you're a child, you're going to get your uncle Michael to give the demo to Robert. You're not going to be a grown ass little boy going all the way over there. I mean, what, did you have a chauffeur? Did somebody drop you off? Did you catch a bus? How did you even know where the studio was at, young man? Man, let's keep going. Very aggressive talk. And I understand that's why I give you the appreciation that you're trying to give me an insight, but you're trying to introduce me to things that seem like they have a, a motive that you're trying to create something behind it. No, it seemed like he's doing exactly what he's blaming Robert to have done to him at 14. He's trying to create a backstory behind what he's saying happened to him at age 14. Still manipulating the process of just letting the world know that R. Kelly was this, that, and whatever. So sad. Kelly Nation. I'm, mm. And so I went back and asked him a question again. I said, so could you tell me more about the Illuminati? And I said to him, I said, and he said, listen, when you become, if you become a part of the Illuminati, if somebody asks you to become a part of the Illuminati, do not say anything. Leave from them. Do not answer any questions. Walk away from them. They're going to ask you about those three doors. They're going to ask you about uh, the slander, homosexuality, or sacrifice. And from there, I was able to, like, vibe out with some of his assistants. I, I don't know. I, I think I'm not sure if um, Sparkle was there. I'm not sure. Like, I, she looks real. Like, when I look at Sparkle now, I feel like I've met Sparkle before. She probably remembers me, but I, I think I've met Sparkle. And I, like, again, I played a couple of more songs from him, and then we left from there. I stayed in touch with him and, you know, like, tell him the Illuminati is, I don't know, man. I can't, I can't really say, like, I, I didn't take that route. I don't feel like I didn't take that route to become a part of the Illuminati. But yet he's part of the Pharrell people. He's part of the, and he's going to tell you all the people who he has 
partnered with in the music industry. He was so close at the age of 14 to get to R. Kelly. He was in the music industry. So he was part of the Illuminati, whether he want to admit it or not, which he will eventually admit. But here's the thing, Diane. I don't know who this dude is. This is somebody who's coming with the aftermath, trying to keep up the the uh, narrative that this thing had been going on for so long with R. Kelly. You know, what's hidden in the dark will always come to light. Free R. Kelly. Free R. Kelly. Thank you. Thank you. And so when, when he, did, did he, did he talk about how far he went or anything, any, um, any things in, in detail that he suffered as a result of going through uh, any of the doors? He just told me that he regretted some of the choices that he he made when it came to signing paperwork with his career on top of the people that he chose to be around him. Now, it didn't take a rocket scientist to have him tell this 14-year-old kid I guess that would be something that you would give advice. I don't know if he even, if if R. Kelly even knew at that particular moment, the people that were surrounding him at that point, because you got to remember it was right before the 2008 trial. So um, when he was with R. So it's, mm, 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 mm. The norms, as he, as he, that was his favorite word, the norms, the norms that he decided to have around him. And he he did things. He didn't really tell me exactly if he chose the door, but in his small terms, he said, like, I made a decision to better my surroundings for the people around me. Mm. Were you privy at all to any of the, you know, I'm not, I mean, I knew you mentioned a bit. <clears throat> Hold on. He made a decision to better better the lives of the people around him. Well, yeah, he said that. R. Kelly has said that a hundred times, that he did, he wished that he had have been able to read the, the signature pages of the contracts. So he's not saying anything that R. Kelly hasn't already said to society, and he's making it seem like it was personal between him and R. Kelly at the age of 14. Just by listening to this guy, I can simply tell that he isn't being genuine because he's all over the place with his story and it just isn't making sense the things people do. Exactly, Kathy. They just want that few moments of fame and wait until you see how he interconnects um, with the gentlemen who are on this panel, um, you know, um, interviewing him. So Kells is going to confide in a 14-year-old he doesn't know. Absolutely, Linda. And that was the part that this man, Magia Ma, um, Jackson, didn't get. He didn't get. And even in the, um, what is it, in the chat, I, that's why I have the chat replay play, pay, playing, because I want you to pay attention to what other people are saying and what they're seeing as well, because he is trying to make something more than what he know it was. He definitely is. And he is manipulating this story. He is. Um, and that was an interesting sight, I'm sure. But were you privy in the time frames that you know him to anyone after you had met with him telling you to be careful around him at the age that you were? Well, the photographer, which I, I was, I was going to try to bring him um, on a show, but he was just like, he just don't want to do it because, you know, like, he lives in Chicago in this dangerous zone. But he was saying, like, that you just got to be careful for him because it's very, like, he lives in Chicago. He knows how R. Kelly rolls. Like, he rolls around in nice vehicles, and he he's around younger kids, and even not only younger girls but younger boys and this is the narrative the narrative that he wanted us to understand was that there could be possibly some young boys that R. Kelly may have you know interacted with mm. <laughs> in, in um, the industry it just wasn't females 
that his that he had around him. In hindsight, do you think he was trying to groom me for something? I feel like it because, you know, me not understanding, only thing I understood about the studio was get a paper, create, and and make music. I was I was I was learning. I still wasn't a learning experience, a younger producer on my own trying to make my own way. And I feel like it was questions like, you know how you're like, you you try to um you, like we all had it before we try to get with a girl and you like, you know what I'm saying? So you think you gotta uh so you might even not even ask you, but like, um, so you like you gotta go with your boyfriend later? <laughs> so but oh, I don't see, have, you, so you, you know, pick her ear, you pick her ear to try and see what where she at. Yeah, I don't, have a, boy, where she I don't at. have a boyfriend. I don't have a boyfriend. You know, so one of those type of things that he was trying to do with me, like it was, it was like trying to see exactly what I knew. If I could get past, I feel like if I would have knew more, then he would have gave me more to to uh, to digest and. and understand you know but since i didn't know so much it was like okay i'm gonna give you hints and i'm 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 gonna tell you do not but he kept on expressing about these three doors and he kept on expressing to me about the norms and that's what i wanted to ask you guys like you know you guys really study like when he when he asked me about the norms what do you feel like he was trying to like break like give me as far as like news wise like the norms of creating your own world and and, and being able to control it and nobody everybody's going to follow protocol regardless because if they're looked at a different way then if, they, if somebody does something wrong then basically everybody's going to look at them wrong because the norms are already set well, that, that's a simple it, it just simply mean whatever you was taught was right and wrong forget about it and reestablish it and set it for yourself and don't let nobody intrude in on that that's your own thoughts about what that is that way you open to uh, to whatever. You know what I'm saying? Once he can, if somebody can get you to believe that you can get rid of all your morals, that's what it comes down to. Get rid of your morals. And then we'll give you a new set of morals and you live by that. That's how I take that. So do you see how he's setting up the entire conversation? He's setting up the conversation to say so that the commenter or the, um, the, the group that's interviewing him would then put him in a position like this is where he what he was trying to do to you he was trying to tell you drop all your morals and come and follow me the pie piper move that's what he was trying to get them to narrate for him sad Uh, i have a couple of I'm going to address two things. Um, mm-hmm. One is towards you, and one's to uh, the, the audience here. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll address the audience first. Um, the only way you can figure out if anyone's telling the truth is to open your ears and shut your mouth. Like, mm-hmm. that's one for sure way to hear. Um, constantly saying that it's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie, it's a surefire way not to hear. Whether or not it's true, it's true, it's true. So you hear the hope. And when he said that, Kelly Nation, that's why I chose to put it on the podcast tonight. Um, because I don't even believe that he believes him. And that's what got me. Who the hell sent you with these lies on Kells? Stop the dumb stuff. If Michael Jackson were here, you wouldn't be saying these lies. Yeah. But you see how they got him out the way? Even Whitney Houston. Nobody could near, uh, nobody could come to anyone's defense. Prince, nobody. This entire interview is not constructive at all. Why do we as a people try to bring another one of us down? Well, because, again, that Illuminati perspective is in us. It's the division and the conquering of the in-house, out-house mentality of slave thinking. So it's the same thing as, oh, you're in the house with NASA, so I'm out of the house. I'm going to try to get in the house and take your place, not even caring of the fact that we're both slaves you know, in the scenario in which I'm speaking. So that's why. 
This is a total fraud. He was trying to gain attention by being seen with Brandon Howard years ago, claiming to be Jermaine's son, but he got exposed. Yeah, we don't believe him, no, but I still feel that we want to face the lies. So like this man says, we can learn the truth. And that's what this is. Exposing the lies to find the truth behind what truly happened to Robert Sylvester Kelly. Let's keep going. Full story. When you heard the story, then you